Hey, and we are live. And I hope I set the volume on the phone correctly. <laughs> anyway, we are Jeff and Jaron Thompson. We are We are Kingdom Ministries, Stability and Simplicity. We're going to wait and just kind of travel on here until a few more people join us. Um, another beautiful day here in central Colorado, loving where we live. Mm -hmm. uh, got up, what, it got close to 60 today, which some people would say, isn't it springtime there? Yeah, that is springtime here. <laughs> and then clouded up and got chilly. So we are speaking about... No, oh, this was one of the hardest things I've ever done, even researching it was just difficult. Thank you, James. Blessings to you too. This is one of the most difficult things that we've we've ever done, that I've ever done studying, and that's uh this is just simply the darkness, the return of the gods. Uh opening scriptures, Deuteronomy eighteen, verses ten through twelve, from the in the English Standard Version. There shall not be found among you anyone who burns his son or daughter as an offering, anyone who practices divination or tells fortunes or interprets omens, or a sorcerer or a charmer or a medium or a necromancer, or anyone who inquires of the dead. For whoever... Oh, gosh. Sorry. <laughs> For whoever does these things is an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord your God is driving him out before you. That says those who do it are an abomination. They're not practicing practicing abominations. They are. Hi, Mary Lou. And Revelation 21, 8. But as for the cowardly, and these are the words of the Lord. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. And again, Revelation 21, verse 8. Also from the English Standard, <clears throat> this this word came about, uh, and and Jaren and I always start each day, even, whether I'm going to work, she's going to work, where we always start each day. I hey, see. little sister, we always start each day uh, with a devotional time, usually about thirty minutes in prayer, and there was something about that morning that we knew the Lord was speaking and moving. Uh, so this was in early March, and hi Shelley. And the Lord had spoke to me personally about this, uh, probably in a little more detail than he did you, even though we weren't together, uh, about the evil that is beginning to blanket this world. Hello, Michael. Thanks for joining us, sir. And, and it's, it, it's it particularly about how it's entering the mainstream. You know, it's always kind of been in the mainstream uh, to, an, you know, to an extent, but at the same time, not to where it is to be, we're being gaslighted to accept it. And it's very blatant. Yeah, it's, it's very blatant. Mm -hmm. uh, there's always been evil and wicked in the world. It's always been masked in some way. But up until about 30 or 40 years ago, it was, you know, if somebody practiced evil, hey, you know, keep it in the closet. And those of us who are older know what that one means. Uh, we keep it in the closet, keep it put away, you know, if that's what you want to do, that's your business, just don't bring it out, don't influence the children or or anybody, or the innocent. But like I said, up until about 30, 40 years ago, that's the way it's always been. And most people rejected that evil publicly, and it was because of the influence of the church and in society. And morals and values. Yeah. Even even like morals and values have changed so drastically, <laughs> which has just been such a, um, a just a doorway and yeah. avenue into yeah. all of this. And so, and and our heart with this is that when you shed light on darkness, darkness flees. Oh yeah. And so bringing this to light, speaking the name of Jesus over it, that's our goal. We're not trying to magnify evil. We're not trying to magnify right. anything else. We are just trying to bring darkness to the light and speak Jesus. Yeah, because what do rats and roaches do when you turn the light on? They run, they flee. So. And so you're going, <laughs> trying to whack them or shoot them or do whatever with them. But we're gonna cover some of the more obvious ones. Uh, their names have changed over history, uh, but they're still the same. It's still the same deal. Um, 
but we're seeing more and more again more and more in our mainstream outlets you can watch any award show now and it is there it is in your face you can watch a major sporting event same deal it is in your face even clothing line at certain department stores. Right. It's in your face. So the one, the ones that the Lord specifically spoke to me about, uh, I added three more from the website because I was praying about this today, but the first are necromancers. Uh, it's kind of a popular deal. But a necromancer, according to Wiki, someone who is said or claims to communicate with the dead in order to discover what is going to happen in the future. It's also someone who is involved in black magic magic for evil purposes and we covered magic a few weeks ago and that it's not always evil it's just man has turned it evil mm -hmm. but black magic uh, necromancer it's always veiled as a good work for the hurting and the vulnerable uh i remember i remember as a little kid there was a popular game called bloody mary and it was you had to go through this process and she would appear in the dark and such and we didn't know. I mean, nobody had told us or warned us against it. There was a Ouija boards and, and all these things that conjure up the dead, seances and things that we used to practice that nobody told us, don't do that. <laughs> and, but speaking to the dead is, is still a big thing. It's probably a growing thing. Mm -hmm. uh, next one, Molech. It's a Canaanite-Egyptian deity. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> from the Bible that was brought with Israel from the old land. Yeah, little sister, <laughs> you too. Um, it, it, Molech is also known as the abortion god. Uh, it's a sacrificing of children to this idol it was also a form of worship of the dead. Which now, just, run. sorry, no. just the fact that this has been around and so consistent for so many years, um, it just lets you know the fact that um, that evil is real and you have yeah. to stand against it. And stand doesn't mean verbally assault. Stand means... Or attack people. Yeah. It has... It, it's, <laughs> it's, um, it's more of God, this is not of you. What do we do? God, right. this is not of you. We speak Jesus over it. And we thank you that you speak to us on what to do about it. Right. And... Uh... Thing, thing about Molech, you know, like I said, it's it, in, by definition known as the abortion god. But Molech was what the, Israel was sacrificing to and worshiping when Moses was up on the mountain. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in depictions in the movies and stuff, it was a big hunk of gold shaped like a calf. And they were, uh, you know, bowing down. It wasn't it. They were sacrificing their children in the fires of Molech. And... That is why when Moses came down from the mountain and seen this going on after all God had done for them, who wouldn't come uncorked when they mm -hmm. seen that? And, you know, and that's why I said you are not worthy to receive the laws of God. Sorry, I'm getting emotional here. Mm -hmm. and, and then too recently, I had actually watched video footage from the 1936, I believe, Chicago World's Fair. And... Some of the scariest stuff I'd ever seen before. It was an actual, inside Wrigley Field, it was an actual uh, ceremony to Molech. They had a Molech idol set up. They sacrificed a baby, and I hoped that it wasn't a real baby, that it was a doll, but it was it was so graphic. And uh, Jaron had the opportunity to watch it. I said, absolutely not. Uh, anyway, that's, that's just where but we live on this. That which has been is that which will be. There's mm -hmm. nothing new under the sun. Right. We just can't be lax in in how we speak against what's going how on. How we go against it. Yes. And, we'll, and we'll get to that. Uh, next one, Baal or Baal, depending upon where you live, B-A-A-L. Uh, and this one, this is an interesting one. This is another one that, that was brought over into the new land that God specifically warned them about. Uh, Baal is the name given to several deities or false gods. It's specifically the name of the Cana uh, Canadian, Canaanite Phoenician god of fertility and storm and the sun. Baal is also associated with Beelzebub, demons, and the devil. Um, uh, the god, god or goddess of fertility, and we'll mm -hmm. get to that one in a minute, uh, simply sex. That's what that was all about. Uh, next is Ashtoreth or Astarte. 
Queen of Heaven, Goddess of War and Sexuality. Uh, there is a male counter counterpart with the same name known and simply known as the Duke of Hell. And <clears throat> another name for Ashtaroth is also Columbia, is also uh, Semiramis. It's the same, same uh, goddess entity, only with different names, goddess of war and sexuality. Mm -hmm. And what are we seeing in our society today, big time? So next one, Baphomet. And the reason, and, and I asked the Lord why this one, because it isn't necessarily an ancient god, but, it's a, but it is an old god. Baphomet is our modern day image of Satan. And we, we normally see it, uh, the, the goat sitting on a throne with the horns and the, and the pentagrams on, on the forehead, on the chest, and uh, right fingers pointing up. We see this in a lot of, a lot of artwork from the Renaissance, mm -hmm. hello, and of, you know, of holy ones doing this and what, what this means. And the left hand, the left hand, the fingers are pointing down low, and it's always a two. It just means as above, as below, meaning it's it's a it's a blasphemy of 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 heaven on earth. Mm -hmm. And there was actually a very well known department store that was selling children's clothing with this emblem yeah. on it not too long ago. Yeah, and uh, but this but this God, yeah, little sister, uh, but this God also is when. Anybody who's familiar with the Knights Templar, um, kind of the modern, kind of the ancient fathers of, of today's Masons and such. Hello, Joan. Uh, bless you, Joan. Um, when the Templars were broke up, people decided that you know so much wealth shouldn't be in the hands of of just one group, but they were also distributing this wealth to those in need. But anyway, somebody decided that to make the accusations, and these were the days of the infamous Inquisition, many Templars were executed because of the accusations of worshiping Baphomet. Uh, final, and this is the one that affects us all today, and just seems like this year has just really become, well, you know, it's no big deal, and that's transhumanism and artificial intelligence. Uh, what, are, what is transhumanism? It's a philosophical, and scientific movement that advocates the use of current and emerging technologies such as genetic engineering, cryonics, AI, and nanotechnology to augment human capabilities and improve the human condition. One simple example is anti-aging. What this is, is using any technology, be it, uh, be it chips, vaccines, injections, or anything like that to, to build superhumans. There's already promises of eternal life through science mm -hmm. that's floating around pretty heavy. And the danger of this is the fact that within our DNA is literally the name of God. And so mm -hmm. with that, you're messing with, with the very element of who God is and you being formed in his image. And so that's the danger of this one that's so subtle, but yet... You know, you're because you're like, oh, it doesn't change really anything, but it literally changes right. who who you are, right, and whose image you are made in, right. Anybody who's watched the Terminator series and all, you know, oh well, that's science fiction. Well, is it now? Um, but we're seeing it. We're seeing it come about with with in robotics and other things, and um, science is already done being able to transfer thought to thought. To people around the world via the internet, mm -hmm. and it's only just a matter of time where um, thoughts will be able to be tapped into. And I still think that they're doing it now, mm -hmm. but that's just my little conspiracy opinion. <laughs> well, but even even talking about Re the Book of Revelation, where um, you know they talk about the mark of the beast and what you're aligned to, the right. whole thing has to do with um, who are you pledging your allegiance right. to. And that's... It's all about allegiance. It is. And that's what all of this is about, too. Yeah. Um, push forward, JT. Okay, uh, names may change, uh, but the intent is still the same. Mm -hmm. The goal is to turn humanity from God, set the heart of men to the father of lies, and that is that is in John eight forty four, which reads... 
because I am not sitting on the proper scripture here. <laughs> John 8, 44, when, this is when Jesus was, was getting on the Pharisees and they say, you know, we're, we're, we're sons of Moses. Uh, Jesus just straight up told them, you're of your father, the devil, and your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character, for he is a liar and a father of lies. I can't even imagine the Lord saying that to me or to anybody else during that time because those are pretty harsh statements. That is not the, the uh, hugging Jesus that we're used to or the bedsheet wearing Jesus that we all mm -hmm. see. <laughs> so, but anyway, uh, the Lord had spoke this as I was walking and praying with him, uh, and he was pretty adamant with it because he just, he caught me so off guard with it all. Uh, and it's just, and it's just simple rebellion that, that men are doing. Uh, it's disguised as unity, acceptance of others because we have to accept everybody uh, because they're different. And it's also disguised as fun, and leisure and you know life without responsibility one more time our uh, our enemies done a superb job here mm -hmm. uh, they are they are deceivers but god is still god and he is still lord and sylvia's right there's no casper the friendly ghost <laughs> no but we indoctrinate kind of unknowingly sometimes our children or even ourselves oh, yeah. because we um kind of like what you were just speaking about. We unplug and we don't pay attention to what we're unplugging with. Mm -hmm. And so our charge to you today is to be alert right. and to be intentional. <clears throat> yeah. So this is what the Lord said. Beware the darkness that comes in deeper disguise and acceptance. Beware the necromancers. And that was pretty specific. The children, my little ones, the innocent and the guiltless shall be targeted by this evil and those who carry it for blood, for money, for fun, and for sport. I will not hold them blameless or free from their evil deeds. I shall take my revenge and do justice at the time appointed. Pray, speak, act the way I direct you. Those who are called by my name must put words into the atmosphere, and I will heed the words of my own and act accordingly. But you too must act accordingly, lest a greater evil rise up to devour the innocent and all in its path. Be diligent, warriors. Become conquerors of evil in your words and your actions, for I will judge all concerned in the coming days. There is a window of opportunity and release that is opening that I have set. As it opens and you receive your orders, your agendas, your tasks and your resources, go with all I have placed within you. <clears throat> there is a time and there is time. Prepare yourselves for I am making your way and I have made your way. And... Again, this one hurt, and just mm -hmm. because the images that I that he showed me and all this were okay, we can't we can't sit still, nor can we turn a blind eye to it. Uh, it's going to affect us all to a degree, whether directly or indirectly. It's still going to affect us all. Uh, Matthew eighteen six, and the the Lord again, and this is when uh, they wouldn't let the little ones come to him. So Jesus placed one in his lap and he used it as an example, but he also issued another stern warning, mm -hmm. uh, starting in verse three. Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. There's a promise, but whoever Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a great millstone fastened around his neck <clears throat> and to be drowned in the depth of the sea. That right there is, is hardcore. And hallelujah, we, we serve a hardcore God. And again, this one, I cried when the Lord was speaking to me about this. So fortunately, I was by myself. Uh, because Jared and I both, and there are many of us who, who, who know the things that happen with the little ones and, and to girls and to women and to boys and young men that <clears throat> it's, it, I say it this way, these people that do this aren't even human. But it's even those that are trapped into a lifestyle, mm -hmm. trapped into choices and decisions 
There is light. There is a way out. There, there is light in that darkness. Right. And that's what is our job as believers is to help turn the light on for people. Right. And how do you do that? By the love of God and the obedience of, like you were talking about earlier in the word, you speak into the atmosphere, the words he gives you to speak. You can't sit idly by. You can't passively coddle. There's a balance to showing the true love of God that Jesus died for. Yeah. Uh, God is still God. And last we checked, he's never lost a fight. Amen. Matter of fact, he's never had to fight. It's a true statement. Uh, he's never had to personally engage, to my knowledge. But as, he, as this evil is rising, family, um, we, the remnant, are also rising. Yes. Remnant of God. And these are the hidden ones who are going to be the Father's hands in this. And we already are. Uh, we're rising up in power. And we're rising up in love for the battle mm -hmm. that is against all that is wrong. Um, we're hearing it. Jaren and I are hearing it personally a lot these days about, you know, man, I sure wish the Lord had come back because it's getting rough. Uh, -uh. and we know what, we know what the word says. We know what the end time prophecies say, but we can't look for an escape mm -hmm. when God yeah. is asking us to engage, to engage with his enemies and our enemies, mm -hmm. because if they're his, they're ours and vice versa. And if God fought for you, you need to fight for others. Yeah. You know the life that they're missing. You know the love that they're missing. You know um, the the love that they don't understand. And so it's it's being that tangible presence of God in people's paths that changed their lives forever. That's that open doorway for God to start speaking to them in their dreams and in their visions. Mm -hmm. And um, And nobody may ever know you were the one that planted that seed, but it's... But it's one of those, don't, like you said, don't look just to escape. Right. Look to change lives. Look to make a difference. Look to be the light in somebody's world. Well, and add to that, uh, one of those Hebrew idioms that we heard so much about all our lives, that if, and, here, and here's my issue with escapism, if, and there, that idiom says that if you see something and you don't do, if you see something evil or something wrong going on and you personally don't step in to, to make it right mm -hmm. or to stop it, you're just as guilty as the one doing it. And as we, as they say today, let that one sink in. Yeah, that's Because hard. that's, that's harsh. And, but at the same time, we, we cannot, we cannot just say, well, you know, it's always been. And, or it's somebody you know, else's fight. It's not, it's somebody else's child or. Somebody else's home. Doesn't really affect me. Yeah. And, you know, anyway, sorry, I'm getting excited ahead of myself. <laughs> uh, but the thing is, we, we really don't have issues rallying around a cause or one event or mm -hmm. a person or a couple people. Uh, but we have a difficult time rallying around one another. I mean, especially, especially if it costs us personally. If it costs us our time or if we have to get dirty with somebody or or wallow in the in the filth with them to help get them out. I mean that's mm -hmm. that's and that's that's not an accusation or a condemnation, folks. That's that's just an observation. But it's I've reality. been guilty of it too. Where you don't want to mess yeah, with somebody. It's reality. Because we've all been burned by people who we were trying to help and it hurt us, it damaged our families, mm -hmm. but yet at the same time it's one of those that's why you do it with the wisdom of God. God, right. what say you? What do we do here? How do we behave? How do we act? What action do we do? What do we speak? How do we yeah. intercede? Yeah. Because um, the things we don't understand or that we don't want to understand, we're going to leave it up to someone else to fix it anyway. Mm -hmm. Verse, instead, of, instead of jumping in there and, and saying, what say you, Lord? How may I, how, what can mm -hmm. we do? What, what can we do? And the fun part about all of this is the fact that you don't have to be the solution to somebody's issue, but what you can do is be the intercessor that gets the paths crossed with the person that is that's, that solution, yeah. that tangible love of God. Because what's hard for me is not hard for Jeff. And what's hard for um, Jeff is not hard for, you know, what's easy for Jeff and all of that, it's... We're different people. We have different gifts, different talents, different abilities. Yeah. And I know I totally messed that up. No, you didn't. But um, Not at all. But it's one of those, 
what, what Shelly and Sylvia, what their gifts and talents are, are different than ours. And so we can reach different people because when Jesus was moved with compassion, that is when, um, that is when power happened. And you're right, Shelly, it is networking. And that's why we do have to not be intimidated by each other's gifts, but give each other the platforms and the intercession right. to do what God's called them to do. Right. And, you know, we, we ended our post with this quote, but I'm, we're going to add to that. Uh, and it's from Edmund Burke. Uh, he was British. Uh, and it's so strong. The only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. And one more he made that, that whether he said it at the same time, I don't know. But nobody, nobody made a greater mistake than he who did nothing because he could only do a little. Amen. And that's, I mean, that's, that was, that's a challenge. And mm -hmm. so keeping our weapons of spiritual warfare and ourselves sharp, well, how do we do that? Well, we stay in the Word, of course. We stay in the Bible, the Word of God, <clears throat> because the Word of God is living. Oh, yeah, sharper than a two-edged mm -hmm. sword. Uh, we stay fueled up with his word. We stay in prayer with the Holy Spirit. Yeah, whether, you, whether you pray in tongues or not, that's, up, that's between you and the Lord. We pray in the Spirit all the time because we're edifying not only ourselves, but we also, we're also praying over mm -hmm. situations. And when you pray in the Spirit like that, it's it's also the Lord downloading information to you. Pray for this and pray for this and pray for this mm -hmm. one. Uh, I was awakened the other night, yeah. one in the morning, mind you, and uh, I knew it wasn't about me. And it was a, it was a terror. It was a night terror, and, and and fear came all over me. And so I had to get up and just say, all right, who is it? And there were several people given to me. So I prayed in the spirit over them, over myself, because when you <laughs> when you get those words of knowledge as a seer then that also causes your own emotions to shake and to tremble and so you have to ride that storm out with that person even though you're nowhere near them mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, and so that was okay I mean I was up the rest of the night and still function quite well you <laughs> at do. work and and also wrote some things for another for another deal somebody asked asked me to write for them and so I mean, it turned out to be a good night for all concerned, and we got the report from from them, the people, mm -hmm. some of the people that were involved. And I said, "No, man, everything's good. You know, man, things changed in the night. Great, hallelujah." Amen. <laughs> Amen. And when you do intercession, oh, I can tell you my experience. I can't say right or wrong. But I can Please. just tell you my experience with intercession. And when you intercede, it's God will. I'm. I don't operate the same way Jeff does but yet we have the same outcome. Does that make sense? So everybody operates differently, but it's mm -hmm. hearing from God clearer and louder than any other voice and knowing like, God, this is what you're asking me to do. So you intercede, you pray in the spirit, you speak life, you speak the word of God. Um, and that person never knows you're fighting for them. Right. Never knows you're fighting for them. But what does happen is it changes everything. Sure. And if you do that correctly, nobody will ever know. And that's okay because you're not doing it for recognition. You're not doing it for the limelight. You're not doing it for anything except for you are, you are fighting for somebody's eternity. You're fighting for somebody's sanity. You're right. fighting for somebody's peace of mind and peace of heart. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes it forgoes your peace. But it's okay because you know where your peace is anchored. Right. And you don't have to have the recognition. Right. Think about it like this. Uh, if I'm an angel and I'm doing all this work for my people, <laughs> they don't know I'm doing it. <laughs> and so that's, uh, that's uh, I don't know, I just, this is me personally. I just call it, yes, my angelic anointing mm -hmm. where you're doing things in stealth all the mm -hmm. time. But you're also, you're also a spiritual assassin because you're, you're knocking down the evil that's trying to hurt somebody else's mm -hmm. life. So, and that's, and that's warfare. That's it not is. murder. That's warfare, guys. So, it um, is. Oh. I'm good. I mean, we're we've been on thirty minutes. So. so, like like we said earlier, our heart was to release this word, um, directed by God, but it's also to bring about this conversation to know for those of you that are battling and that are interceding, you're not alone, mm -hmm. and those of you that are just like, I didn't know how to do this. I didn't know what this was all about. 
hopefully it was just a little insight to, um, yeah. what do you do? What do you do when you encounter evil? Amen. How do you, how do you react and how do you respond? Right. And so we just want to pray over you before we bless you. Is that okay? Please. Okay. So, um, hi Macy. Hey Macy. Hey and, Tamar. And, um, so, Father, we just speak over everyone watching right now, and we speak over everyone that will be watching. We thank you that they hear your voice clearer and louder than any other voice, and another voice they will not follow. We thank you that they are so loved by you that they can feel it with the very depths of who they are. Yeah. We thank you that their identity is sealed in you. And so, Father, as, as the light that is in them, we thank you if, if anyone encounters darkness, we just call it defeated in the name of Jesus. Yeah. We thank you that um, we just speak those things that are not of you as far as the East is from the West. They no mm -hmm. longer exist. And what we do speak into the atmosphere is your peace, your yeah. patience, your kindness, your joy, mm -hmm. your gentleness, yeah. your self-control within us. That, Father, that we can respond, react, love people the way that you've called us to love so that mm -hmm. lives are never the same. And anybody who is battling right now, we just thank you that you are rescuing those who are in dark places, that you are yes. touching them right now yes. wherever they are at. And, Father, we just call light right now into that dark spaces and yeah. into, that dark, into that darkness. Yeah. And, Holy Spirit, make us... Make us wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Mm -hmm. Cause us to to do all the things you're having us to do. Lord, disguise us the way evil tries to disguise itself. Not mm -hmm. so that we may do evil, so that we may do your good. May the light that you have placed within each of us be that city on a hill, be Amen. that beacon, be those weapons of warfare, the sins of rats and the roaches and, mm -hmm. and everything that's not of you running running for yes. its life it's not ours to it's not ours to 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 try to condemn nor cast away but all it is is causing evil to flee because yes. we submit to you yes Hallelujah. amen amen man we've got some fun people hello Catherine. good to see you this evening oh but again we don't like to finish up without we we bless you and Blessings, blessings, blessings to each of you. Yes. And we say that a lot, but it just is. Uh, it's not generic no, with us. No, it's wherever you are in your life that God will, you will feel him reach down and touch you. Yeah. If you live a blessed life, wherever you're at, there you are. <laughs> so anyway, Numbers chapter 6, 24 through 27. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and he be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and bring you his peace. And because you bear his name, you are blessed. Amen. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Uh, according to, I got to stop saying, ah. <laughs> but Colossians 1, verses 10 and 11. May we be fully pleasing to God, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in his knowledge. May we be strengthened with all power and from his might for endurance and patience with joy from Psalm chapter 20 verses 1 through 5 in times of trouble may the Lord answer your cry may the name of the God of Jacob keep you safe from all harm mm -hmm. may he send you help from his sanctuary may he remember and honor your gifts your offerings and your sacrificial love may he grant you your heart's desires and make all your plans succeed and may we all celebrate together one another's victories and give glory and praise to God. And may he answer all your prayers. Hallelujah. Amen on that one. And personally for us, may the vaults and treasuries of heaven and earth be open to you. May every mm -hmm. secret that God has held for this time be released to you. And may, you re and may we all receive those, those secrets and, 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 and those tasks. And may the wealth and riches of heaven and earth be yours at your disposal for whatever you need, plus a lot more extra. We bless you. We love you. Baby, anything else? And just as David blessed the Lord in the presence of all at the assembly, 1 Chronicles 29, starting in verse 10. And David said, Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. 
Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heavens and in the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come from you and you rule over all. In your hand are power and might and in your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. And now we thank you, our God, and we praise your glorious name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So on that note, thank you all for watching. Um, catch it on the replay. It's going to go to our YouTube channel. At... But if this raises any questions, too, you're welcome to email us to comment on the video. Mm -hmm. and Whatever you need. We whatever are here. you need. So we thank you. We love you. Peace be unto you, and may every day be your best day. Amen. Probably, and amen. Amen.